Have you ever had a supervisor make completely ridiculous expectations of you? Bad leaders do that a lot, but great leaders, because they're detached from what the troops are actually doing, will also fall prey to this if they aren't led effectively. I'm not saying the regional manager needs to lead your boss better. What I am saying is that you need to lead your boss better because I want you to exercise as much control over your own destiny as possible. And the content of this video is intended to help you do that. It's time to lead up. There are approximately three correct responses when your boss asks you to do something. Yes, yes, but, and no. Using these three responses and other little tips and tricks, your goal is to fulfill your leader's intent, what they need, which ideally is approximately what matches what they want, but not necessarily exactly what they asked for. By default, when the leader asks for something, the correct answer is yes. If you are confident you can do it and make it happen, then say yes. But ask clarifying questions to make sure you don't overlook key details. Make sure you get your key points of contact for the task and any important deadlines, your list of must do's and can't do's. As a bonus tip, if you had a feedback session with your supervisor, ask if they have any recommendations about how you can tangibly apply that feedback to the new task. Then you'll end up reporting this back to them once you're done. If there isn't a deadline assigned, you should usually still make one and tell it to your boss. This way, you and your boss can both hold you to it, but always try to ask for a bit more time than you actually think you'll need. This way, you can help ensure you match or beat your deadlines when unforeseen complications arise or you give yourself time to over-deliver if the task allows for over-delivery. Obviously, some jobs or tasks, you just start doing it right now until you're done. This is a lot more likely in less corporate settings like law enforcement, fire, emergency medicine, or the military. Even in those environments, when you say yes, you want to ensure that you understand what the boss wants and why they want it. Why they want it can sometimes tell you a lot more about how you should get your work done than what your boss actually asks you for. After all, they can't do your job as well as you do. So say yes and clarify your leader's intent. That said, sometimes whatever you're asked to do is clearly not going to happen either on time or to the right standard of quality. So this is when you would answer with a yes but kind of response. As a very robotic example, humans don't actually talk this way. Yes, sir, we can do that, but can you tell me how important this is compared to the new contract with Company X, our routine coordination with Company Y, and the office holiday party? The reason I'm asking is I'm not sure we'll be able to do all four of these things well and on time. But if you tell me how important the quality and timeliness of the new task is compared to everything else, I'll know what I need to delay or cut corners on. So setting aside that humans don't talk quite like that, hitting these items in a more organic back and forth series of questions during the conversation is definitely a good idea. Also, let the supervisor know at the end of this conversation or shortly afterwards what items you expect to let fall by the wayside, including how or to what extent. Going with another robotic example, Hey, we win with the standard parts for the first project instead of looking for the most cost-efficient option. So it will cost $25,000 more. Let me know if you'd rather us still do the more in-depth review instead, but if we do that, I need 10 more days to accommodate the fourth project you assigned to us. If you can't do everything well and promptly, then make sure you clarify the importance and urgency of new tasks with your leadership and quantify compromises you expect to make to them. Saying no is also a viable response. Now, if you just give a flat, no, I'm not doing that, the boss will probably not be very receptive to it. 
Furthermore, if your boss has an ego or a bad day, or if you haven't been able to develop a relationship with them yet, then saying the exact word no might not be very well taken. You don't really have to say yes or no, though, when you're told to do something. You can use more open-ended language to communicate the same idea. What we can do is only review the five subcomponents of the project, where we expect to be able to save the most cost. I can't tell you how much we'll save of that $25,000 until we get into it, but then I would only need a five-day delay to accommodate the fourth project. Explain to them the most similar achievable action, product, or service that will aid or fulfill their intent. In all of these cases, the leader, manager, boss, whatever you call them, has communicated something they intend to have and the distance between what they're communicating and what your knowledge, skills, and capabilities will vary. In a perfect world, this gap would be zero. But back here in reality, it often won't be. So what you're trying to do is continuously develop your own abilities so that you can do whatever the organization needs. And at the same time that you do that, you're also going to manage your leadership's expectations to the extent that you can. Doing this expectation management up front is better than busting your deadline and then making excuses after the fact. The former is you being a good subordinate. The latter is you failing. Try to build an interpersonal relationship with all of your teammates. This means that your supervisor is more likely to listen to you and not feel like you're letting them down when they get something less than a yes. Instead, they'll trust that you care and are instead looking out for their best interest. This means your subordinates will work harder for you and feel more open to tell you no or Yes, but when what you're asking for isn't realistic. This also means that your peers are more likely to help you. So when your boss's fourth project is working out to be a lot harder than you expected, as all projects will do, your peers can help you still get it done on time, or they can vouch for why you need additional resources. Leading up is a skill that you develop first and foremost by practice. However, it's also useful to review literature, watch videos, or have discussions about leadership, followership, and human performance so that these things are brought to the front of your mind so that they occur to you in the moment so that you can practice them. Otherwise, you might continue going on as you always have been instead of deliberately improving yourself. To help sustain this feedback loop on leadership and human performance, subscribe to Relentless Growth. There's a link in the description to one of my favorite leadership books, and you can use that to feed your brain as well. You only have one life to live. Grow it relentlessly.